Los Angeles. Welcome to Good Morning Law. I'm Dr. Aaron. Hi, I'm Rob Mack. And I'm Jasmine Moyer. This is Good Morning Law Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Also available on Apple TV and Roku via the EverTalk app. And it is hashtag Miracle Monday. We're going to talk about the law of immortality. Mm, uh, right? Interesting. Uh, we come together each day to know the truth, live on spiritual principle, align with the universal law, and have a ton of coffee. That's right, as always. I've been up since four, so I'm on there my There you go. Wow. That's what I like to hear. 4 a.m. club right now. That's right. Hashtag motivation Monday. <laughs> We're very excited to welcome our special guest to the show. Good morning, everyone, back in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Caroline is in the house. She is so excited to be releasing I Know Better. Hi, Caroline. Hi. Thank you so much for being with us today. So on Good Morning All End, we like to know about your morning routine. How do you start your day? I usually try to make a to-do list so I'm productive for the day and, of course, brush my teeth and just try to get off to a good positive start. Fantastic. Love that. And love those shoes. <laughs> Thank you. Those are serious. Yeah, those are, those are some like Lady Gaga shoes happening yeah. right yeah, those there. Those are nice star quality shoes right there. Wow. Love that. Well, thank you so much. Dharma Love is with us. She's a channeler and a heart activator. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Oh, we're so excited for everything you're about to channel and how our hearts will be <laughs> activated. But first, tell us, how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? I started with silence and meditation, yes. Oh, the best possible way, I love that. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> Grateful I can to be feel here. love like emanating. Yes, she can, <laughs> exactly. Well, she's got the heart activated, so you should feel the love. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for being with us. Kirsten Bloom Allen is in the house. She's the founder and director of ARC Entertainment. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are so excited to hear all about your dance projects later in the show. But first, how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? Well, I have the same routine every morning. It's ballet class. Class. Two hours training. That's just the dancer ritual. So that's my morning every morning, Monday through Friday, right oh, in the ballet nice. studio. Dance routine. That's pretty serious. You're a dancer, Aaron. You dance in the morning? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Oh, Only my stripper shoes on a later. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. No, oh, I still do my ballet stretches in the morning. <laughs> do you? Yeah. That's talk awesome. about arc. I can do some later. Okay, deal. <laughs> we'll save that for the red carpet. Yeah. Well, Susan Wilson is with us. She is the carefree medium. Good morning. Good morning. So how do you start your day? Your I start my day with intention and invitation. My intention is I want to try to be the best soul in a body that I can be. And my invitation is spirit guides, show me or tell me what I need to know today. And then I wait for inspiration. Mm. Oh, love that. That's fantastic. Exactly. No, she's the carefree medium, right? We're going to talk to her about that. Yeah. Absolutely. That We've yeah. got some questions. Yes, we do. <laughs> Crystal David is with us. She's the founder and creator of the Fox Project. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, we're so excited that you're here. So tell us a little bit about your morning routine and how you start your day. Yeah, so I know in a perfect world it, it will be and is the meditation and all the things. But right now I'm in a season where I have a three-year-old who's cuddling on one side and a baby nursing on the other and my goal is just to get up before the rest of the girls because I have five daughters so as long as I'm up first then I can say some prayers while I'm heading to the kitchen to get them ready for school so wow that's incredible and on my the weekends I sleep in at least one day a week <laughs> and I let my husband do the rest <laughs> That's powerful. My goal would be to go back to sleep after that. <laughs> it was like a full day. Well, thank you all so much for being with us. We look forward to continuing the conversation later in the show. We were talking Absolutely. earlier about how it feels like there's this natural way that life develops us with children. You, you, once you go through that, once you are, it's so intense and, and it's really challenging. And once, I believe for, anyway, for me anyway, once my son was grown, it, life got so easy because when you've done all that, I mean, just going through life, you can do anything without a child attached to your hip. It's yeah. really easy. Yeah. I've always felt like you need a life. You, you should have to, you should be required to have a license to have a child. <laughs> <laughs> you need one to drive. I feel like kids are so much more important. Yeah. But you know. But it's kind of your divide, right? <laughs> just saying. Exactly. You know? right. Well, thank you both for giving me my future license for my future yes. children. Yes, yeah. So how was the weekend, you guys? Oh, it was fabulous. I celebrated Maxine Smith at her art opening this oh, cool. Saturday. Yeah. Happened yeah. at Bergmont Station. It was fabulous. Fabulous. So it was a collection of all the wives and lovers of some of the most iconic painters. We're talking the muse behind Picasso and Matisse, and it was a star-studded room. I'm not, not going to lie. I had a little moment when Barbara walked in, Barbara Streisand. Wow. I thought, oh, <laughs> now she needs her portrait. She's been the muse behind some so many of the best, you know, artists and sh television shows. And I mean, her music is just 
be on. So that was yeah. really special. Yeah. And then I went to Paramount and saw Gemini Man, super fun, starring Will Smith. It was really mm -hmm. interesting narratives to see how he was facing his like younger self. And his younger. I love that. Mm -hmm. I that's love fantastic, that. right? That's such a badass. Yeah. Absolutely. A, a movie to watch. Well, that's a great example of what we're talking about today, the law of immortality. And that's really what it is. I'm sort of just going to interject right here because yeah. it's so appropriate because the movie, uh, from what Jez was saying, is really about Will Smith takes on kind of the battle with his l younger self and so on and so forth. And that's really what we are. I mean, the law of immortality states that we are immortal now. It's not like we become immortal. And if from a spiritual perspective, you know, we are immortal. And energetically, nothing energetically can be destroyed. It can be changed form, but we are already that. So, I mean, also we have children, we have younger cells, we have this, our cells duplicate into our own lineage, right? So it is us, I mean, literally. Mm. So I don't know, it seems so weird because when I, when you know the truth, you're like, how does, how are we, how do people not know this? Like, yeah. Wait, how do we not have this conversation? It's, I love this conversation and you're absolutely right. Like, we're not spiritual, we are spirit We itself, are spirit. Right? I think the challenge and the opportunity is to live from that place because I think people, mm -hmm. most people have heard that and on some level they agree with that, it resonates, but to live from that place on a daily basis I think it's the challenge, you know, well, not to be like, you know, it's the reactive, whole, reflexive. Yeah, well, it's just the way that we've been taught, the, the way life is, which is completely not correct. Mm. <laughs> just FYI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so break it down for us, though. What are the basics behind the ideology that you're speaking about? The ideology is like a physics. It's like a, it's like stating like a, a thesis of a physics aspect of life. The, the physics aspect is that you are immortal. You are, there's only life, you can never die, and you can have the transition from this body, but you're not this body. And so it's just like an axiom, it's a truth. Hmm. It's, it's, there's nothing to explain, yeah, it so, is. So, so yeah, so the idea is that, you know, essentially, in the same way that we wear these clothes, one day we drop this body, and this body is somewhat of a costume, you know, and that essentially what you are is non-physical energy, and that it's an infinite and eternal. And of course, that's something that on one level, rationally seems kind of crazy and abstract and esoteric. But when you dive deep into meditation, you have a little bit of sort of glimpses of that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, um, yeah, again, the challenge is to like actually live it, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. like a muscle that you build in truth. It's like at first it seems like some weird concept, mm -hmm. and the more you try it on, it kind of like builds, and then all of a sudden it's like the only way you can really even see life. Yeah. And there's freedom in it because you know that it's like there's not attachment to the body, therefore I can't be touched by disease. I can't be touched by anybody. I can have the experience of that. I can have the experience of, of going through a transition, but the truth is I'm not that. And that's why there's only perfect health because any disease even that we experience in the body is basically the divine signs of how we're using consciousness mm. so that we can evolve our consciousness yeah. as a species. I, I love that. One of my favorite healers, um, Joe Goldsmith, he was actually a salesman Amazing. for a long time. And then what happened was somebody called him one day and said, hey, Joel, can you please pray for me? And Joel was like, I don't know anything about God or prayer. I have no idea what to do. But he told the guy, yes, I'll pray for you. And he closed his eyes and basically said, God, I have no idea what to do here. If there's something to be done, you're going to have to do it because I'm clearly clueless. Wow. And uh, the guy got off the phone. Next day, the guy calls back and like, oh my gosh, I was healed. You healed me. <laughs> Joel was like, oh my. And then so you know, very quickly, all kinds of people started calling Joel to you know, heal him, and all oh, of a sudden wow. his entire sales business went away and he became a healer that way. I didn't know this. Yes, it's incredible. I love him. He's yeah, amazing. it's amazing. Yeah. So later, he basically was processing all these experiences, and they said, well, what's the key to healing? And he said, well, I go inside to that place where no healing is necessary. That's all I do. And everything else happens on its own accord, mm -hmm. in its own timing, if it's meant yeah. to happen. Amen, right? right? That's so right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's oh, kind of that's the idea. that's good. Yeah, right? he's dope. I love Joe Goldsmith. Right, but it's, I think it's an amazing story. But I do think that it's important to know that we're also in some form having a relative experience of being mortal. And so it makes us appreciate this thing called life and yeah. experiencing all that we can. So right? what can right. someone do? Let's say they're struggling with this idea. It mm -hmm. feels abstract and esoteric, and it feels like something that's impossible to do. Where can they start, Aaron, in terms of sort of living from this place of spirit? instead of a place from being, you know, always susceptible to what's happening in terms of conditions, circumstances, yeah. people. I think it's important to get a community mm -hmm. and like read books and and start praying and meditating and doing the stuff because it really ends suffering and it ends any of the struggle or attachment or anything in this life and in that is freedom. That's why they say made the truth set you free, right? Because it really does set you free. You can still play the game here. You can still feel like you have a crappy day, but you know you're really not that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, one of the other ways I think about it, it's sort of a simple version, but it's the equivalent really is, that's why I call it unconditional happiness. I think enlightenment and self-realization and God-realization essentially is happiness. That's the reason we want yeah, all those things. Mm -hmm. And so happiness is of course inside. And I think if you just make that a priority, you sometimes discover the ways in which 
you're less susceptible or not susceptible at all to what's happening outside of you. Yeah. Um, you know, that your happiness is totally dependent on what's going on inside of but you. But when was the shift for you when you went, it's my, my happiness isn't because I have this or my happiness isn't because I feel good or whatever. The very like day what? I decided that I was going to commit suicide and then as I was in that process, when I suddenly felt relieved of the burden and responsibility and all these problems that I was experiencing, mm -hmm. and suddenly I felt this bliss and peace like wash over me for no good reason. Right. That's when I was like, oh, <laughs> it's not the world. Yeah. It's not all these conditions and circumstances. Obviously, it's something going on within me. Yeah, you profound, know, right? very profound. I know there's a lot of people that struggle with not wanting to live yeah, today. So thank you for sharing your, I think it's really amazing that you get vulnerable and share the real story. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Look, yeah. I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Well, it was full you. moon, right? So it the was moon? a full moon. Yeah. The I mean, hunter's moon. And, you know, that's part of the conversation for me in my healing is looking outside of myself and my own worries and recognizing that the universe around me is so beautiful and majestic in its ways. The sun sets and it always rises and that moon still keeps going. Yes. You know? And they always said when I was growing up that everybody got crazy on the full moon, right? It brought out a certain kind of nuts in you, if you will. And it's really interesting, the more developed I've become in my own personal spirituality and awakening, if you will, the more attached I do feel to the seasons and to the power of what's happening within this universe, right? It might sound very La La Land, but there are a few things that I think that everybody can relate to in that. And those are sciences that have gone back for thousands of years, right? So right now is really a time in fall for us to release everything that's been toxic about the past year to really hone in, as Aaron mentioned, you know, a lot about quarter four, and what we really want before we welcome in the new year, yeah. you know? So it's been really interesting and highly encourage you to check out whatever kind of moon meditation you want in this season and just see what that is and how you re right. relate yeah. to that beautiful yourself. Advice. Yeah. Yeah. And that's great year-round advice. <laughs> yeah. right? It's every year. Like it's oh, yeah, it's a full moon again. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, it is. I found myself, like, when I was younger, I was always, like, asking God for a GPS, right? I literally would have that conversation with, my, with God in prayer, and I would be like, if you could give me a sign, like a GPS in life, that would be amazing. Cause I'm, I'm down here and I'm pretty lost. And I kept asking that, and asking for that, asking for that. And then I realized, oh my God, I already have one. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it already exists with, within myself, within this universe. And all I had to do was release looking for that mm -hmm. and accept all that is. And I, I had the direction I needed. I am. Yeah. I love that. My drop. A, yeah. We're going home <laughs> now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so good. Well, let's take a break. We come back. We're going to talk to our amazing guests, how they have created the mindset and the miracles in their life. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co-founder and host of EverTalk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here on the couch with all you amazing people. Yeah. I'm just in complete awe. Thank you. It's happy to be here. And for those who don't know what goes on, there is, this is a big old, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> a lot you going do this on every here. day. Why? God Why bless you guys. Right? I mean, people, there's a lot going on. Thank you for having me. This is an awesome studio. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Oh, I feel that. I yes. feel that. Cool. How exciting. Motivation Monday. You know? And the guests this morning have been incredible. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. And we have Rachel Boston, who is in The Last Bridesmaid on Hallmark. It actually is dropping tomorrow, the 22nd, right? It is. Tomorrow night's our premiere. Woo! Wow. Congratulations. I am so excited to welcome Jason and Ashley Waller to the show. Congratulations on the new beginnings. We're so excited for the premiere on MTV tonight. Thank you, guys. We guys. appreciate it. Thank so. you. The book is actually being shipped out today. It published this what? week. Wow, congratulations. congratulations. You guys are the cool. first show oh, that awesome. I've actually done on uh, talking you. about the book. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> Our friends at Universal Pictures have a special delivery for us this morning from a tethered himself. Ooh. Have you seen <laughs> the film Us by oh, Academy Award winner gosh. Jordan Peele? You know, it, I'm sitting here next to you guys and it's just like, this is a powerful moment for me. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm humbled by it because it's like, I'm sharing this movie with you guys, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's moving for me. Mm. What are you most grateful for today? 
I am so grateful to be here and to have the opportunity to be with all these wonderful, badass boss babes <laughs> um, and with all of you. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to share the positive messages out in the world because I think the world really needs it right Amazing. now. What we have done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, and I nice. Thought, That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Now show the camera. Up to you to choose the winner. Is it Annie? Is it Haley? That's why I like the show. You know, years ago I did the Dinah show, which is Dinah Shore, and it was a daytime show. And it was kind of like this. It was just like very up and it was all positive stuff. They didn't bring uh, negative stuff to, to the audience. And that's why I feel with this show. It's very relaxed. You know, it's very professional, but it's, it's quite a bit of fun. You can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm. First TV experience. I'm so happy to do it with you. that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La On Motivation Monday, it's all about finding and creating a life that you love. And so many of us have love for dance. And so today we have amazing dancers in the house, Arc Entertainment Company, you guys do ballet and production yes. Yes. and all the above. But first of all, I'd like you guys to each introduce yourself so that we, people know who you are sure. and kind of your place within Arc Entertainment. So uh, my name is Magnus. And, uh, Matt, wait, Madness? No, no. Madness. <laughs> with a G. With a G. With a G. G. It's, it's a, G. G. Yeah. Wow. It's a Danish not, name. Yeah. No, it's not Madness. It's Magnus. Yes, it's gorgeous. It. What a great name. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. 
And my name is Tigran, and I'm from Armenia. Mm -hmm. And my name is Kirsten Bloom Allen, and I am the founder and director of ARC Entertainment Company. So Kirsten, tell us about your relationship with these two dancers specifically and how that's evolved. Um, well, basically, we met. Um, I saw Magnus on a YouTube video, and I needed a male partner for a video that I was creating, and I reached out to him, and we started rehearsing together. We have to kind of test the chemistry to see if it works when you start working with someone Just like new. dating. Just like dating. It's pretty similar. And we just clicked. It just, it worked great. And um, What was it about Magnus that initially drew your eye and your interest? Well, it's a lot of it in, in ballet is sizing. I needed a, a certain height and a certain build. Um, and I, I, I kind of tend to look for a little bit of an opposite look than myself. So he was uh, with the blonde eyes, or blue eyes, yeah. green eyes, blonde hair, yeah. and my sort of more brunette features, I thought we would blend well together. Beautiful. Yeah. So but you're really taking ballet out of the box. Mm -hmm. Taking ballet out of the box entirely. So um, I, I formed Arc Entertainment Company just over a year ago with the idea of blending two things that I absolutely, absolutely love. One of them is ballet, and the other is rock music. Love. So, love it, love it. So I have been a professional ballerina since I was 16, and I have just a tremendous, I mean, tremendous love and respect for the art form of dance. But I also like really dig rock music. Yeah. I just really, I love the energy, the vibe. It just pulses to me. I don't know, it resonates with me. So I thought, well, why not combine these two things that I love, ballet and rock music? So we are integrating dance into rock concerts. Ooh, I we that. are, I know, it's so fun, and we are, creating dance-based music videos that tell a story, a narrative through dance, and we are right now actually merging with cinema. Wow. We're trying to get, get ballet dance out there, make it more visible, make it more accessible. I'm trying to give it new platform to shine and really create new fans of dance. In the mainstream. It's great because yeah, I would imagine the younger generations are not going to the theater as much. Not as, as much. Generation. Not as mm -hmm. much. And and it's really the arts are really struggling. Mm -hmm. They're really struggling and they have to reform to, to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my goal with it. Fantastic. I love with that. this art form that I love so much. Yeah. Yes. What's been the greatest challenge in terms of taking this dream of yours and turning it into a reality? Has it been the awareness itself? You know, honestly, um, I no. T for me, it's just integrating into the music industry was a whole new animal for me. I mean, I know the dance world. I'm familiar with that. I've been doing this forever, but the music industry, it was like I felt like I had to learn a whole new, really a whole new skill set mm -hmm. to work with music promoters, to work with band managers, to work with musicians. You know, it's just it's a very different world, but. It's also so invigorating and exciting to learn something new. So paint the picture for us. Yeah. Where will we see ballet? We'll see it at rock concerts. So we'll we have videos. we have worked with the Wallflowers Band and Jefferson Starship, Super iconic cool. rock bands, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, U two is the goal. Yeah. Let's get to you. <laughs> okay. So hopefully someday. Manifestation Monday. Yes. Right? yes. Manifestation. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and right now we're, we we actually are pre production for a video shoot this Friday here in L A. Um, we are. Creating a music video, a dance-based music video to the band Disturbed. It's kind of a crossover metal mm -hmm. oh, rock. Yeah. You know Disturbed. Yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing, <laughs> right? So they have this song called A Reason to Fight. And this song is actually really poignant to this er to the earlier conversation because the message in the song is about not giving up, inner strength, um, hope, fighting hopelessness, fighting addiction, fighting depression. You know, it's really bringing attention to suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we're so happy to be creating something to expand that message and get that out there. And, you know, it's my hope that we could, we're creating something dance-based that will resonate and connect with someone and potentially give hope and maybe save a life. Absolutely. Maybe save a life. So I'm wondering how each of you do that in your own respective lives. I mean, because dance can be a very dark culture as well. Well, it's represented that way in a lot of films like Black Swan. We really don't stab each other. 
It's, I've never seen it. Have you, have you stabbed anybody? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you stab no, anybody? I never stabbed And not just in culture with other dancers, but within yourself, right? And really fighting the, that perfectionist and yes, there's through pain and things like that. That's absolutely. what I'm really speaking to. Absolutely, yeah. yes. There's the drive is always there. You're never, ever going to be perfect. There's always going to be things you have to fix and work right. on, and that's why we train every day. That's why my, my morning starts with ballet class, two hours every morning, and then four hours of rehearsal. You're just constantly refining your technique, getting your body going, getting your mind in the right place. And yeah, it's painful, but you know, my toes are not pretty. Nobody, <laughs> don't put those on camera. Nobody wants to see about Proves your toes. Proves you're a dancer though. Yeah. Those are not, those should never be seen. Um, but they, but I'm proud of them because mm -hmm. I've worked for that. You know, every blister, every, you know, callus, callus is mm -hmm. earned mm -hmm. and I'm proud of that. So there, there's that, there's the hard work with that, but when you love something, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, tell people where they can find and follow you and get involved. Absolutely. So you can follow us, Arc Entertainment Company. We have our website. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. And most importantly, on YouTube right now, we just released, not too long ago, Magnus and I, our Sound of Silence video. Um, it's a love story video. It tells the story of two people who fall in love and experience love and then part ways and all the words that are left unsaid. So ultimately, the sound of silence. Oh. Mm. And our next one will have the message of suicide prevention and fighting addiction, depression, hopelessness with art. Oh, love that. Fighting back with Thank art. You so Thank much you so much. Thank you for sharing your art with the world. Oh, Stay tuned. We'll back. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. Talk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30 day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. On this Manifestation Miracle Monday, there's been a lot of realigning happening in the universe. So we welcome the carefree medium to the show, Suzanne Wilson. Tell us a little bit about what we might be experiencing right yeah. now. There is a shift in consciousness that's happening, but it is happening on an individual level. Uh, I'm often asked as a spiritual teacher, what can I do to change the world? And my first reaction is, what are you doing to work on yourself? right now, there's this myth that there's a separation between all of us and that we're separate from the divine source. I think that's a quantum physical manifestation of our very human mm -hmm. belief that we're individuals. But that's only part of the story, you know? There's a part of us that's always connected with that universal consciousness hmm. but we have to turn off the cell phones once in a while breathe get that. with mother nature mm -hmm. but yeah change is here i've been so excited to meet you love your work and i have a question real quick before because obviously if, if it's a carefree medium so back in the day i used to think that mediumship was just about talking to people who have transitioned right and now right. mediumship is really considered like an umbrella which i love that yes. because i i mean what you just said is a thousand percent truth and 
um, and I completely uh, resonate with your work for sure. So tell us what you know, what you do exactly, and what you can bring, what messages you can bring. I know that you talking about the shift happening right now, the alignment. I love that. What else? What else? What else? Well, I'm called the carefree medium because I live and work based in carefree Arizona. Uh, but I happen to believe Arizona. that once you get the greater reality that you're a soul in the body, the soul first, that you can live a more carefree life. A teacher of mine once said, you know, Suzanne, the peace that surpasses all understanding is always available to you, but you have to seek it. You have to invite it and let it in. So what would you say to people though who are afraid of that? Because I've had conversations with people very close to me. And I, I said, you know, I really encourage you to seek this and try it. And they said, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what I'll find yeah. out or uncover about myself. That's the number one barrier. And Dr. Aaron, you were asking me, what do I do? I teach people how to release the fear. You're not going to see or feel something scary, bad, evil, you know, because that's not who you are. If you open up to the energy that's around you and ask, help me move forward on my path, show me signs, symbols, synchronicities, there's nothing scary there. I think what a lot of it, though, is, is that some of these people, and this one person I'm speaking to in particular, have experienced very traumatic events, especially in their childhood. Yes. And maybe they identify with those events, and they're taking that on as that is them. And well, so to go through that, I mean, how right. does a person work through that? Wait, well, trauma, when we step back and think of it from the perspective of the soul, it's a temporary situation. And no experience that we have while we're in a body, no experience is wasted. None of it is wasted. It all comes together to make you who you are today. So if we can reframe that trauma as, I'm here, I'm strong, what have I learned, I've survived, and how can I pay it forward to help someone else who's maybe not that far along? Mm. Wow, I love that. So we want to get the 2020s coming up. Yeah. Big time on the, you know, numerological, and I'm, you know, always, I believe that all of the timeline is to measure consciousness and how we are evolving in our consciousness. Anything that you see particular coming our way as a species? I think we're going to realize that we're living in an interdimensional world. Um, many, many hundred years ago, I believe that people saw auras. Everyone, not just clairvoyants like me, of but that everyone state. saw auras. Mm -hmm. And over time, we unlearned that. Um, I believe that people are going to get more in touch with their spirit guides, that invisible support team that's around you 24-7, mm -hmm. sending you those freaky-deaky coincidences that point the way. And I think that in our lifetimes, we're going to see a change to where everyone who wants to, and that's the key, everyone who wants to, will be able to make his or her own direct connection with their own beloved people and pets and spirit and their guides. It's mm -hmm. coming. Toto, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, no, so, I love it. Yeah. Right yeah. over there. <laughs> Just find this fascinating. And of course, um, I wonder, you know, for you, and of course you're um, maybe a lot more advanced, but for people that maybe want to connect to those spiritual guides, mm -hmm. um, or maybe just want to experience mm -hmm. less peace, or less fear and more peace in their lives, what practices would you recommend? Well, everyone starts with prayer and meditation. And one of the complaints I hear from people is, I can't meditate. I'm not a meditator. And I ask them, do you go for walks in nature? Do you run? Um, do you sit in a bubble bath and relax? I mean, it doesn't have to be sitting like this going, mm -hmm. um, but quiet the mind and unplug is first. And then there's the invitation and the intention. Before you go to sleep at night, just say, spirit guides, I'm wrestling with an issue right now. I'd love to meet with you. We meet on what's called the astral plane. And I may not remember all the details of that meeting, but will you allow me please to wake up with a greater sense of calm and peace so that I can make my own best decision? 
and they'll come through for you. It may take more than one night. Love that. You can't get there by the 405. There you go. It's going to be all okay. different. So but you can meditate <laughs> while you're on the 405. Right. Yeah, So for one sure. last, but we've had, you know, we've had quite a few mediums and intuitives and psychics on, on the show, and one of our traditions is to get a little reading. So anything particular that you'd like to read for the show or for Only positive news. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Have That's this. all we Only get. Positive. Positive. That's yeah. all we get. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I was listening to your talk earlier um, about the immortality, and I feel like this act this show is actually going to have an even bigger platform than you have right now. And um, I see a multiple like book contract for every single person here, mm -hmm. which is is interesting. I think you're going to do one together, and then your own yes. separate spinoffs. Mm -hmm. And I also get the number three being very big here, as in trilogy. Like three different parts. I so. love that. We've talked about that because mm -hmm. we all have our own expression, and mm -hmm. the show is amazing, and we have our unique, you know, platform. Well, you yeah. planned to come here before you were born. You planned to come together. See? You planned to I, meet. I believe <laughs> that. They always say, "Are you sisters?" <laughs> I, it sounds. It sounds right on. We really appreciate you, and tell people where they can find. How do they work with you? What does that look like? Well, I, I work with people from all over the world mm -hmm. on the Zoom platform, which is great. And, uh, and you're teach, an author. I and you're an keynote. author, a keynote speaker, international mm -hmm. keynotes, and my website is carefreemedium.com. Fantastic. Oh. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. We'll back with more on Good Morning La La Land. Can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jessica Moyer, the co founder and host of Ever Talk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. We all crave connection. I, I'm a big fan of videoing a podcast. The impact that I'm having people on a podcast wow. is I'm having more impact on, on those people than I ever did in news. We want to be heard, but we also need to listen. Podcasts, I understand they are red hot. It's actually remarkable how scary to me podcasting is. Everybody should have a podcast. I really wondered why. I mean, we've been doing this for 12 years. Nobody has done this uh, in other arenas. We have to change the conversation to happiness over financial success. It was like, we have to. We have to. Honestly, it was meeting new people who had already heard about what we've done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, nice. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Yeah. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> you can binge watch. And binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch. Or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Entertainment that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime. Anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are so excited to welcome Crystal David to the show. She is the creator and founder of The Fox Project and has a very exciting retreat coming up, the I Am Retreat. Tell us a little bit about all that you're up to. Yeah, so I created the Fox Project in hopes to answer the question I get all the time, which is, 
you're a wife. I've been with my husband almost 16 years. We have five daughters. We run multiple businesses. So people look at us and like, how do you guys, how are you even here right now? Exactly. And, yeah. How is this happening? How are you a unicorn? With yeah, yeah. What's happening right now? <laughs> I, I actually had to do the hair to like roughen myself up a little bit. <laughs> cool. But um, so I just was repeating the same questions. And so I created the Fox mm. Project because the fox spirit animal is keen, they're self-aware, they move through dark lit, darkness, and they get things done, they problem solve. And so um, those are a lot of the characteristics of how we do it. We just, we do it and we're in alignment. And so from there, what I found was working with women online was not enough. And I love events, I used to be an event planner. So to combine the two, like get women together for three, four days, nothing's better than that. It's like magic. And then doing all the work of who am I? What am I doing in the world? What's my purpose? So it's, it's called I am, and of course, I mean, I believe the entire work, all self development is and spiritual awakening is coming back to the I am mm -hmm. identity. What does it mean for you, the I am? Yeah. So I I created an identity guide, and that's that's all of what I stand for. I want to be like the Brene Brown to vulnerability to authenticity. I feel like if we can just get back to being our authentic selves not bogged down with comparison and what we should. I'm a mom, I shouldn't be leaving my kids. I should be doing this. I'm a wife, I should or shouldn't be. Stop shooting on yourself. Shooting, yes, yeah, yes. So it, it, like all those things, if we could just be quiet and ask, who am I, why am I here? And what am I supposed to, not, I, I don't even wanna say supposed to, we're like, what am I called to be doing? Then we can be in alignment with not being worn down. I think that's why I'm not worn down with my five kids and all the things because I say no to things that are not in alignment, and I say yes to all the things that are, and it just I'm just full of energy because it's like I'm doing all the you know the stuff that I want to be doing. So where can someone start? They want to dive deeper into discovering and knowing who they are, yeah, and living from that place, yeah. Where do they begin? Um, so, so I, I I wanted to share like quickly the five things I believe every woman should do, and man, any person, any human, because we're all just beings really, and. Um, the first one is authentic vision. And by vision, I mean like it really tuning into who am I? What am I good at? What do people come to me for? What, what do I do with my eyes closed? Um, so getting clear on that vision and then having responsibility. I think responsibility is something that people are missing because they're, they're constantly like, when I get more money, then I will. When I go to school, then I can. And it's like, when you realize everything is right now within you, um, I love the saying, what you're not changing, you're choosing. And so it's like, when you realize your choices go in alignment with that vision, then you create whatever you were here meant to create because you start being authentic with your choices. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I do think of responsibility as being the ability to respond, which is the ability to choose differently. Yes, to choose different. Once you're aware, then you're like, oh, I don't want to react like that. I want to, you know, I mean, it's it's saved my marriage. It's turned around how I pay. I mean, my 12-year-old to my one-year-old, it's like my 12-year-old, my she's not going to hate me, but... I'm, I'm like such a better mom with the one-year-old because now I'm aware of like how I'm reacting from the way I was parented and just all the things. And so it's just awareness is really the key to everything. In your experience working with these women, what is maybe the one thing, the common denominator that's holding people back that they need to overcome? Yeah, oh, there's so, it's, it really is that consciousness. It really is just stopping. Um, I, one of my things that I've just been preaching for the last like 10 years is get out of the rat race. And I used to think I was so annoying because I was that network marketer. I was all those things of like, there's something more than the nine to five. And then I realized it's not entrepreneurship, it's freedom that I'm trying to tell people that they want and that they're looking well, for. Well, you're a preacher. You <laughs> I am. Just go, you know, just <laughs> open the church. We need it now. We want your, all of you. You're such a light. You're such a force. And yeah, I mean, thank you really you. are. Just, you're just thank preaching you. truth. So <clears throat> it's amazing. It's so thank beautiful you. to witness. It's, it explains, I have the word tattooed truth on my arm that I literally got on a Tuesday random afternoon. I was bored at home. This was before I started my journey. And I was like just bored with five kids. She's yeah. really figured <laughs> something this, out. This was with one kid, and I was just sitting back, living off of my husband, and doing nothing with my life but just in turmoil. And like to answer your question, it's like when you're not seeking outside of yourself and, and giving your gift away that you're mm -hmm. supposed to be giving, you you will perish. It doesn't matter. I, I had the money, I had the the life, the kids, the husband. I had all everything, and I was just in darkness. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I, I I heard you guys talking about even like getting disease is like another way of waking you up to your consciousness. So for me, it was 
almost losing my family. And then it, that's what snapped me out of it. So I feel like people either go into desperation or inspiration, but something's yeah. going to call you into like, your, your higher talk. self. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I love that. It's so true. The idle mind is the work of the devil, as I say, uh, yes, which we don't believe in an external devil, but the misuse of energy. So yeah. tell everybody about your, where's your retreat? Yeah. Where, where are you opening your spiritual center? I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, our, it's open. It's here. It's now. Yes. Yes. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the retreat is in January, the end of January, the 23rd to the 26th in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And um, tickets actually open tomorrow, and we will it will sell because we're keeping it very intimate. So um, I'm really excited about getting like in the room with women and really just doing the work. Um, so that's that. And then um, you can just connect with me online, and I do online programs, we do ladies events, we do vision board events, so everyone's gonna be getting ready for that. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Really thank you so thank much you for, guys for what you're doing. doing. Thank you, thank you. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow and get more Yeah, so um, Crystal C. David is, Instagram is like the main place, or The Fox Project, and my name is K-R-I-S-T-E-L, and then it's just Crystal um, C. David, and then from there, all my links and websites, and my identity guide, it's a free gift where you, I, say pour a glass of wine or kombucha or whatever you gotta do, have a date with yourself and really just dive in, do something that a lot of people don't do. They don't ask themselves, who am I? What am I up to? And just go through the guide and, and really start there. Oh, yeah, I love that. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank so you. Stay tuned, we'll back with more Good Morning La La Land. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix, of talk. Hi everybody, I am so excited to have with me today Amanda Schoen, creator of Rivers 8, a luxury travel accessory line for those who crave luxury without cruelty. My next guest is Missy Reeves. You guys may know and love Missy from her very long career as Jennifer Horton on Days of Our Lives. Dan Holtz is a dear friend, co-founder of Beverly Hills Rejuvenation Center, and is known as the wellness expert to the stars. Talk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30 day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations. that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere at EverTalk TV. from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La. On Monday, we talk a lot about manifestation and we have Dharma Love in the house talking about hypnosis, how to tap into your higher self and all of the above. How are you, love? Hello, how are you doing? Is this your spiritual name, Dharma Love, or do you, do you go by your regular name as well? No, I actually just go by Dharma Love. Yeah. That was uh, a name that I channeled mm -hmm. and it just came to me one day that I felt uh, I was not resonating with Laura anymore because that's my real name, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, this is kind of common in the spiritual world. People get new names because they die of their Absolutely. lineage and they're reborn in, in the, what they're creating for themselves. In the rap game too, actually. Yeah, they're artists. Right. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Mm. 
what I do is channeling source consciousness uh, for the highest good of all, you know, to help it any way that I can. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just allow source to flow through me however it wants to flow. And uh, I surrender. And by this uh, surrendering, I help myself with uh, hypnotherapy, uh, with NLP, with uh, my clairvoyant gifts. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, you know, I'm of service in any way possible so to people. So if you could share with us particularly how you're using hypnotherapy yeah. and healing, because it's very taboo still to a lot of people that they wouldn't trust to be hypnotized mm -hmm. by anyone. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so trust. Uh, trust is a very, very huge component, okay? So first of all, you go with someone um, and you ask for help to someone that you can really feel connected with, right? So there is always a resonance uh, that we can find in someone. So if you go to someone, it's because you're actually already resonating with them. Or if you're actually called to connect with them, it's just because there is already a vibrational resonance. Hmm? So that trust uh, cannot be forced, you know? So it just happens uh, in a very flowy way when it needs to happen in divine timing, you know? So I would say that everyone who is ready for it is just going to fall into that space of trust and surrendering, you know? It's just fantastic. I yeah. remember, um, you know, early on in my psychology studies when I discovered hypnosis, I didn't realize how much scientific and empirical evidence there was behind hypnosis. Um, and it's particularly good with certain kinds of, you know, sort of challenges or problems that people have. When people come to you for hypnotherapy or hypnosis, what particular challenges might they be facing yeah. and what is hypnotherapy and hypnotism best for? Absolutely. Uh, mostly conflicts, uh, mostly change of beliefs uh, that they may, you know, holding them back in their life, uh, in manifesting, in creating, because we are creators, uh, the life that they want to create, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, release uh, trauma, you know, especially trauma, you know, so I work with, uh, especially women resonate with me, you know, but also men, you know, mm -hmm. and children as well. <laughs> I love children, because I think a lot of people mm -hmm. watch The Secret or mm -hmm. different things and mm -hmm. they got the vision board out, <laughs> and manifested what they wanted and then still felt like they're not fulfilled or they couldn't manifest. Yeah. So how do you particularly know with, with the client when they're authentically manifesting from a place of authenticity? Hmm. Hmm. This is a beautiful question. Um, you know, there is an unlocking element in the heart, okay? So basically, when we unlock the heart uh, and we're coming from a heart uh, without being held back by the fears, uh, that is the place uh, where we can manifest everything. So we open the door to the heart, uh, which opens the door to all of the chakras uh, and to our connection, you know, with source consciousness, you know? So basically, you know, just unlock that. <laughs> as you unlock that, uh, you know, you, you really bypass the mind. You know, there is a conflict uh, between the heart and the mind. You know, so especially right now in the collective consciousness, which is what we are, you know, <laughs> and we're all tapped in, you know, in different kind of ways, and we may be aware of it or not. But what's happening is also that we're really working through releasing what is the mind creating as a block to the opening of the heart. I just love that so much. And, um, you know, one of the experiences sort of insights I've had is that like all the most beautiful things in life mm -hmm. come from somewhere beyond the mind it's never right it's like and so talk to us a little bit about that because I think people have a real hard time quieting their mind so they can hear their heart or quieting the mind, their mind so they can heal or let source or spirit sort of flow through I love this question thank you for <laughs> asking this it's uh, ah, we tend to be so hard on ourselves so there is this pattern you know talking about pattern of trauma you know and all this uh, energetic uh, that we hold inside of our body, mm -hmm. which manifests also in sickness sometimes, mm -hmm. but not always. <laughs> sometimes it just manifests in not manifesting <laughs> into what you want, and manifesting what you really don't want, right. but that's uh -huh. all right. Yeah. Uh, so we all have uh, this connection, and wait a second. Uh, mm -hmm. The mind and the heart, perfect. So the judgment, the judgment is one of the biggest um, energetics that hold us back from really connecting to the heart, you know, and brings you into your mind. Am I doing this right? Ah, oh, I'm doing this so wrong, you know? I could have done it so much better. <laughs> what are they wrong. thinking about me right now? <laughs> oh my gosh, how is my hair looking right now? <laughs> <laughs> so all these things, uh, they keep you away from staying in your center and really in your heart, in your presence, like right here in this very moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware of you guys right now. I'm aware of everyone that is around here and what they're going on, you know, what, what is happening in this very moment in their life? What are they focusing on? 
So there is presence, you know, so you can bring your presence in grounding, you know, so that is one of the ways, right, uh, that we connect to the heart, mm -hmm. that you bring that presence and grounding. And thank you so much for embodying that because mm -hmm. I can feel all of it, you know, it's so beautiful. Yeah. As you bring that, uh, you bypass the mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when I say bypassing, it's actually, um, hmm, you collaborate and co-create with the mind in such a much more open way, you know, where your mind uh, uh, helps you, you know, making your decisions, right, because the mind is very important, right? but uh, does not hinder you from really creating the highest timeline of consciousness, mm -hmm. meaning, meaning the most beautiful life ever for right. yourself and others. So yeah. question, how do people work with you? They work with you like just to come have a session of hypnotherapy or do you do groups or how do you work exactly? I love this question, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> so I do both, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I feel I am transitioning and Spirit has been asking me to transition to groups, you know. So right now I'm actually uh, organizing a group that uh, I think is gonna probably take me, in divine timing, a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a free group just by donation. People are going to be joining and we're going to be releasing ancestral trauma from our bodies, mm -hmm. you know? Because uh, we have still so much uh, lower density energies in our bodies uh, that are kind of, you know, keeping us, you know, in our lower chakras, uh, you know? So um, also sexual energy is related to this, by the way, you know? So a lot of people are stuck in their lower chakras uh, and therefore they cannot unlock the heart and the whole, you know, channel and uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah people out there are like she's so la 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 you're so woo -woo. and i love it though it's so gorgeous and i've gotten so clear that it's perfect because the exact people that just resonate are going to just absolutely adore yeah. working with you yeah. and there's going to be someone different that works mm -hmm. with the, whatever and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of all the spiritual yeah. work is yeah. that it all comes to truth but that the personality is what attracts the specific community and everything so yeah. thanks for being you oh, thank really you so beautiful much. quick question yeah, just a quick so question sure. so like releasing all the ancestral um mm -hmm. trauma yeah. i think about that and i think about the millennia <laughs> like, like, yeah. like right like mm -hmm. it feels like it would take forever because it took uh, forever. but how long does it take you know what is forever you know like we have this <laughs> moment that it's like everything that we have yeah you know and it's actually lasting forever it feels to me that this is lasting forever mm. like literally why? Because we're bringing that presence into this moment and nothing else uh, really matters. Uh, so this is how we co-create, you know, the highest uh, timeline. Actually, can I share something? Sure. You know, I would love to just give a little nugget, uh, you know, for everybody. Uh, whenever you are in conflict and you don't know what to choose, you have like four, five, six, seven, eight options, uh, or maybe one or two. <laughs> you can just tap into your heart by closing your eyes uh, and just uh, uh, tell yourself, okay, if I do this, uh, Picture yourself doing whatever is it uh, that you want to do, okay? So choice number one, choice number two, choice number three. Picture yourself in all of these choices and see how your body and your heart expands or not. Hmm? The ones at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, right? That and the other the one is Air One. Up, and uh, yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> so you feel that expansion in the heart, yeah. you know, when it's the highest timeline, when is, uh, what is the, you know, the best choice that I can make for myself, for the highest good of all, you know, because it's not about ourselves, you know, like really, like in the end. Uh, yeah, it's like me, 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 me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it's us, you know. Mm. <laughs> well, please tell <laughs> everyone where they can find and follow you, Dharma. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. <laughs> they can find me here. <laughs> I'm always here. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah, I love to tap into my inner child. I feel that, you know, like it's so... It's just what we are, you know? Mm. Absolutely. Uh, so they can find me at, uh, on my Instagram account, which is I am Dharma Love. Uh, they can find me also at uh, IamDharmaLove.com. They also can find me at Life.Academy and Life written with a Y, uh, which is an amazing platform and organization that I work with. Uh, we created uh, an amazing course for empaths. You know, to manage and empower yourself. So there are amazing, beautiful techniques, uh, channel techniques uh, that you can use in order to empower your gifts, uh, hmm, because everybody has them, and uh, to just develop them and just really fall into that space. Also, I have a new course coming up, which is, uh, I'm going to cut it short. <laughs> it's about sexual energy, you know. So as we were talking about, you know, these lower density energies, uh, for me, uh, Spirit told me you need to start, you know, like just mm, channeling and just... Uh, exchanging um, 
this kind of information so that people can start managing that energy and bringing it up into the upper chakras mm -hmm. so that we can really bring all of that sexual energy that is such a huge drive, right? Mm -hmm. And what if we bring that uh, into our own passion and drives uh, in life? What if you can be aroused all the time, you know, and living in an orgasmic state? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much, Darby. I can come back anytime. Stay tuned. We'll be back <laughs> the morning while I'll end. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. That, that's one thing when my husband and I, we were, I mean, we were both like very depressed and, and um, but we, one thing that's helped us like kind of recover, snap out of it was um, to make the decision to go out and carry, carry on her legacy and help trying to help the rest of the world. In fact, my husband, he's got, he goes to work, he has a desk, one pile of papers, he says makes money. The other one, big pile of papers, saves lives. So he took the one pile of papers and gave it to his top executives, said, you run the company. I'm, my mission in life is to go out and save lives. I love so that's that. what we're doing now. And the way yeah. that you're actively getting in there, like it's not well, just, you're not just at, you know, but you putting yourself out there and the husband, you know, going to DC, doing this thing, it's like you're actually getting in the trenches yeah. and that's important. EverTalk is hashtag community powered. So we are excited to offer you a free 30 day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift and empower you anytime, anywhere at EverTalk TV. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lawland. It's hashtag Music Monday. And we've got an international rising pop star with us, Caroline. Congratulations on the release of your new single. Thank you. So, so tell excited. us a little bit about I Know Better. It's really empowering. It's kind of sassy, super pop. It also has some dance pop and electro pop. And I really hope it makes people feel empowered and just want to dance and feel like, I know better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So have you ever had any of those moments that maybe inspired the song? Like, yeah, I knew better. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, especially with like wrong groups of friends and you're like, mm -hmm. ah, I don't want to do this or wrong guys mm -hmm. too. And being like, oh, you don't treat me very well. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. so tell us a little bit about your journey to becoming uh, the star that you are. Thanks. And it really started on Instagram and by doing covers on Instagram and just consistently posting and especially just talking a lot with people and really developing real relationships and just being people's friends. And then by doing that, you've made some powerful connections. Dan Brock produced for Miley Cyrus, Shania yeah. Twain, Britney Spears, and you're working with him now. Yeah. Yeah. That's He's really good. Yeah. I really love working with him. But that's also very validating to the star that you are. Thank you. But you have a very unique voice and message. What is it that you want to really be known for? Well, I really want to be known for hopefully helping other people and just telling them, hey, you have a friend in the world. Cause a lot of teenagers are so depressed right. and like teen suicide is at an all time high and I get messages all the time like oh I'm so suicidal I want to kill myself and I just really try to give them uplifting messages and like I even I really want to write a song about suicide like even somebody asked me and because I'm really good friends with this one guy and he asked me and he was like oh will you write a song about like to keep me from killing myself because I talk to him almost every day and give him really encouraging messages and just tell him like I love you you're amazing you're the best and so I really want to write a song for him and just oh, tell him yeah. how amazing I still don't know what it's going to sound like but I want it to be perfect. How does that make you feel Carol I know that your your fans and your followers who are in such dark deep sad places are really coming to you for light and inspiration. I mean I'm happy they're coming to me but I just, I wish I didn't feel that way, so. You're so good at supporting other people clearly in, your, in, in their lives. And um, 
who supports you or how do you find support when you're going through a tough time? They do too. Yeah. I talk to them too. Yeah. Because I also think if I say, oh yeah, like sometimes I feel depressed too, it helps them too. Yeah. And then they feel like, oh, somebody else feels that way and she feels that way. Because I think people get surprised when I say, oh yeah, like I totally deal with that too because I'm really positive on my page and try to be really uplifting. And so it shows them like even the people who are really happy deal with that. Yes. Yeah. It's super important to have that relative that reality based. So where do you see yourself going? Where do you want to go with all this? Just put out as much music as possible and hopefully get it to as many people as possible and just have them hear it and hopefully like it. What can you tell us about the Caroline collection? Well, it's a fashion accessory line and I'm wearing it right now. Super it's cute. Love. It's really glittery. <laughs> that is good. Good. Yeah. I always say, never dim your shine. Yeah. Live glitterly. Glittery. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Glittery. We always say, have a glitterful day. Oh. That's like our thing. Oh, I love, love that. that. It's really Cute. fun. Oh, please tell everyone where they can find and follow you, Caroline. Um, Instagram at Caroline's underscore music. And for the Caroline Collection, the dot Caroline dot collection. Fantastic. Oh, Love the music. Thank you so much. Love yeah. your heart. Live a glitterful life. Yeah. We are Good Morning La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. All of today's interviews are available as a podcast on iTunes and the whole show is streaming on Evertalk TV, on Apple TV and Roku. That's right. We're waking up the world together. You guys have a beautiful manifestation Monday, music Monday, all the above. Make a great day. It's going to be a good morning, La La Land. Mm -hmm.